Hello, how are you doing? I have to confess, I was a little surprised. I've read the Bible through, I've read it a bunch of times, but today I heard this passage in a little different way. And so, this is my question based on how I heard it. Why do we stay with people who mistreat us and abuse us? Why do we hang out with them? Why do we maintain those friendships? Why do we allow it to continue? The Apostle Paul wants to talk about it, so let's talk about it. You're like, oh, why this topic? I don't come up with this stuff. It's just in Scripture. We're just going through the Scripture, and that's what we found. So why don't we start out by just greeting each other and saying, Hello, Ndewa, Baboni, Ola, Privi, Niho, Kamasta, Anyahaseo. Blessings and peace to you all around the globe today. And welcome to Dr. Barry Daily, where we are going to talk about why do we just let people keep mistreating us? Why? Sometimes we have choices, right? Sometimes we think we have no choices, but then we actually do. Let's see what the Apostle Paul says. Let's pray and ask God for help. Amen? Here we go. Lord God, I come before you right now, and I pray for this one listening. I pray for your peace, and I pray for your presence. Lord Jesus, be with us now. Father, we come to you with our questions and with our hurts, with our hopes. As we hear your word today, Father, open our eyes, open our ears, open our minds, open our spirits, open even our bodies to your word. I pray, Lord, that there would be a message for this one listening today from your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's get to it, amen. The Apostle Paul, we are in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 16. He says to the Corinthians, I repeat, let no one take me for a fool. But if you do, then tolerate me just as you would a fool so that I can do a little boasting. In this self-confident boasting, I'm not talking as the Lord would, but as a fool. Since many are boasting in the way the world does, I too am going to boast. You gladly put up with fools since you are so wise. In fact, you even put up with anyone who enslaves you or exploits you or takes advantage of you or puts on airs around you, or slaps you in the face. To my shame, I admit that we were too weak for that. I don't do that. Whatever anyone else dares to boast about, I'm speaking as a fool, I also dare to boast about that. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the Abraham's descendants? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to even talk like this. Look, I am even more a servant of Christ. I have worked much harder. I've been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was even pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at the sea, in danger from false believers. I have labored and I have toiled and I have often gone without sleep. I have, I have known hunger and thirst and I have gone without food. I've been cold and I've been naked. And besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Who is weak? And do I not feel weak? Who is led into sin? And do I not inwardly burn? Look, if I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The God and Father, the Lord Jesus, who is to be praised forever, knows that I am not lying. In Damascus, the governor under King Aretas had the city of the Damascus, Damascians guarded in order to arrest me. But I was lowered in a basket from a window in the wall and slipped through his hands. The word of the Lord, the word of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Hey, Beverly, or afternoon or evening. Hey, hey, Beverly. Hey, Tad. Hey, Grace. It is good to see you. So what did you take away from this? This is an interesting little piece of scripture. <laughs> what did you take away? I really want to hear what you got out of it because I'm about to share what I got out of it. And my question as I started off today was, 
Why do we hold on to the people who mistreat and abuse us? I know, sometimes we think we have no choice. Sometimes we feel stuck. But I wonder if sometimes we do have choices. I don't know. Let's look what Paul says. Let's go back to it. I, I think we're going to need some prayer and blessing time today. Uh, but he is talking to um, the Corinthians, right? And they basically had some false teachers. And one of the things these false teachers have done is come in very strong, very arrogant, and they've demanded a charge. You pay me and I will come um, teach you. And this was common in the ancient world. You would go to a philosopher, a teacher, and you would pay them and sit at their feet, right? And... Yeah, and that's what you would do. And so this seemed more reputable to them. The fact that Paul was willing to serve them without a fee. The fact that Paul, gosh, I mean, he's in prison so many. All of this seemed less reputable than the person who came all shiny and bright and new. And this is what Paul is saying. Aloha, Terry. It's good to see you. And so, again, let me ask you the question, and then let's see what the scripture says. The question that I took from today was, why do we hold on? To the people who mistreat us and abuse us. And do we really have no choice? I don't know. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we don't know what those are. But let's look what Paul says. He says, let no one take me a fool, but if you do, then tolerate me just as you would a fool. So he's saying, you think I'm out of my mind. You think I'm a fool. You think these teachers who are arrogant, they come in all shiny and bright and make you pay for them. Um, and I'm the fool? Fine, I'm the fool. In this self-confident boasting, I'm not talking as a Lord would, but as a fool. And this is what he says, since many are boasting in the way the world does, uh, I too will boast. You gladly put up with fools, since you are so wise. Do we gladly put up with fools in our own wisdom? I think we need to pray for discretion, right? In fact, he says, you even put up with one who enslaves you. How often do we feel trapped in a job, trapped in a relationship, trapped, when we're actually enslaved? He says, or exploits you, or takes advantage of you, or puts on air, someone who's arrogant with you. That's just like, I hate that, that attitude, that right? Or slaps you in the face. And so the slap in the face is actually probably to Paul considered worse than a slug in the face because it's meant to also degrade and shame. He says, to my shame, I admit that we are too weak for this. He means I'm too nice to you. I, to my shame, he right? He's being facetious. I don't slap you. I don't put on airs. I don't do any of these things. You guys seem to like that better. And so my question as I read this was, why do we as humans, why do we put up with that? Why do we put up with that in the church? Why is it that when someone is kind and nice and loving, we run from it? I know one of my own answers from my own experience is that we put up with what we're used to. And I think the great thing about Jesus is that he heals us so that we don't have to keep getting into those patterns to break those patterns. You ever wonder why someone's, maybe parents were alcoholics, they marry an alcoholic, why these sins run through families. We're used to them. We'll put up with them. Some people will put up with being hit, but no sexual abuse. Some people, you know, the sexual abuse keeps coming. They, find, they end up attracted to people who are kind of, have these problems. Other people just rageaholics. And you're used to rageaholics. We put up with what we're used to. But in Christ, Paul says, I don't treat you that way. And this is basically as I look at, look at this big old book. Hmm. It's heavy. Not as heavy as the first Corinthians book, but pretty heavy. But what he's saying is this is kind of an apology. Not like an I'm sorry, but an apology like a defense. This section is Paul making a defense for himself, saying, I'm good to you. Why don't you turn to me? I want to encourage you. I don't know your situation. I know that there are times when we can. It's sometimes entangled, sometimes difficult. But we can, we do have choices, 
And it takes a lot of courage to make those choices. Now, I'm not telling you to get out of your marriage because I know I'm going to get an email. <laughs> I'm not, I don't, you know, I don't know your situation. I would recommend going to somebody and talking about it. But I think the first step for change is you got to talk with someone. You got to say, hey, I'm in this situation. A, a real, you know, human, a counselor, a, somebody that will listen and say, hey, what can we do to help my, my situation better? And it's possible your situation won't change. And the truth is, I, Melissa, not the Lord, would tell you, don't stay and be hit. Don't stay and be sexually abused. My God, don't let your children be abused. That's Leaving is different than divorce, but you do what you got to do to protect yourself. And, again, that is me. That is me saying, if you asked me what I would say, but I would say, to try and seek help for your spouse. I've seen people stay in jobs where they're really spiritually abused, um, just intimidated, the arrogance, because they're so afraid they can't get another job. And I want to beseech you to seek the God of heaven. That Paul here is saying, why are you letting people treat you that way? It is, does apparently, the Apostle Paul doesn't think that's how we should be treated. So I'm going to go through this one more time. According to the Apostle Paul, he doesn't think they should be treated in a way that someone enslaves you, exploits you, takes advantage of you, puts on arrogance, puts on airs around you, slaps you. So why? So I just want to pray today for healing. And maybe you're good in this count. Maybe your relationship are good and solid. Maybe that was something from your past. But maybe you know someone else that needs prayer. Will you stand in the gap for them today? Because I think the first thing we need is Jesus. And then we need healing. And then we need courage. And we need a door. And we need wisdom. Right? Sometimes we're terrified. We don't know God's love. Sometimes we have been mistreated for so long, we don't realize we're worthy of love. Sometimes we've been mistreated so for so long, we don't know what love is. So, according to the Apostle Paul, love is not being slapped in the face. Love is not someone being arrogant with you. Love is not someone taking advantage of you. Love is not someone exploiting or enslaving you. That's not what love is. Love is patient. Love is kind right? Let us pray for healing so that even in our church relationships, we don't put up with that garbage. Our work relationships, our personal relationships, and again, we can pray for change. We can pray for healing. We can pray for reconciliation. By all means, it would be God's will that that would happen. But we can also pray that when it is the time to seek a safe space, that we have that safe space. Amen. So I want to pray healing and wisdom and courage over you today. And if you are not in that situation, would you stand in the gap today for somebody else? Would you today be willing to pray with me as I pray for you? Would you say that person's name out loud that you want to stand in the gap for? And if it is for yourself, would you say, Lord, help me? Right now, who do you want to pray for? Lord, help me. Lord, help. All right, let's pray. Lord God, I come before you right now. I don't know why we put up with people who are mean to us and mistreat us and abuse us. And we reject you. We reject your kindness. We reject those who come in kindness. Because we're so used to being hurt. We're so used to being enslaved and exploited and treated as less than and hit and hurt and taken advantage of. We're so used to it, God. But you have come to show us another way. So, Father, I come before you for this one right now. And first and foremost, whoever we are praying for, if you're praying for yourself, say, Lord, help me. If you're praying for someone else, can you say that name? This one whose name's been spoken. Open the eyes of this one listening. Open the eyes of this one we've prayed for. And show them they are worthy of your love. 
that you care for them, that you want to protect them, that you want to show them your love and your kindness and your gentleness. I pray, Lord, that this one would realize that true love isn't a slap in the face. True love isn't being taken advantage of. True love isn't arrogant. It's not exploitive. It is not enslaving. Lord, heal this heart. Father, I lift up the one who is acting inappropriately, abusively. We pray for radical salvation. If the person knows you, Lord, then we pray that you would put a mirror up to their actions and help them to seek you for change. If the one listening right now has hurt or is hurting others in these ways, pierce their heart and show them their own sin and help them to change. Is there someone you want to pray for change for? Can you say that name out loud? Lord, I pray for. Lord, I lift up these ones right now. I pray that you would reveal their own sin to them and their own brokenness. And I pray they would come to you for salvation and for healing and for help. Lord God, I pray for reconciliation. I pray for mending of broken relationships. I pray for wholeness. I pray for healing in relationships. And Father, until that is possible, I pray that you would protect this one that we have prayed protection and healing for. If they need a new place to live, give them a new place to live. If they need financial help, give them financial help. If they need the police, give them the police. Safe people to come help them. Safe police. Show this one that you see them. Give this one courage to seek a counselor and to share. Give this one courage to make a change for the positive. Father, I pray that you would heal this one so that they can receive kindness, so that they can receive gentleness, so that they themselves can be kind, so that they themselves can be gentle. I pray change. I pray positive change over this one listening right now. I pray this would be a new day. And Lord, that you would guide their path to wholeness and healing in you. Bless this one. Break the chains of the past, Lord. I pray the breaking of generational sin. Let this be a new day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, friends, well, that was a heavy prayer. And my heart breaks because I know it was there because somebody needed it. So if you had someone who needed that prayer, hit like, hit love, hit share, maybe message them, send them, and say there's a prayer for you today. I pray all of God's blessings on you, friends. And God willing, I will see you tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Bye-bye, friends.